Coming up on Titans All Access, he never gave up on the play, and it resulted in his first career touchdown. Dave McGinnis breaks down the efforts of Traylon Burks. He never gave up on the grind, and now he's a part of a stout Titans defensive line. Learn more about Tier Tart's journey to the Music City. Plus, he never gave up after an early offseason injury sidelined him for five months as a rookie kicker. Caleb Shudak makes his NFL debut. All of that and plenty more right now on Titans All Access. The franchise record for touchdowns for the King. He's going to be sacked. Jeffrey Simmons. Henry throws. Touchdown, tight. Tannehill. He's got it to Burks. It's McCrary with his first career INT. Intercepted. Fulton with the interception. Welcome to the BetMGM studio and Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. And General Manager John Robinson is already here. We're going to be talking ball presented by Duncan. And what we're talking about is December ball. The calendar has turned to December, and when December arrives, John, your Titans team, since you've been GM, have taken it to a different level. To play well in December for the Titans, what are you going to need to see? Well, I think that's the time of the year. This is the time of year, Mike, when we, you know, we lean into kind of what we fundamentally believe in. Uh, it's playing a tough style of football. You know, it's a little colder out. Those hits sting a little bit more. Uh, so you try to put a little extra, you know, oomph when you're trying to, you know, get a guy on the ground as a tackler or block a guy um, to get the run game going or protect the pass. Um, I think that's kind of what we try to do this time of year, um, lean into that mindset uh, more than anything. Titans fans are buzzing about rookie wideout Traylon Burks and his statistics have been pretty great. But beyond that, what is sticking out to you about him and his play? Well, I think it's it's really the work ethic. I mean, you saw that uh, in the Cincinnati game, him hustling downfield to recover the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Um, we've seen that in practice. Um, just the you know the relentless effort, play in and play out, trying to get the timing down with Ryan, uh, getting his landmarks down uh, in the passing game, working on his angles uh, in, in the run game to make sure he gets his guy blocked. It's really the effort that he's put in uh, that's really starting to pay off for him. Your first December opponent, Philadelphia, their quarterback, Jalen Hurts, last Sunday night set a franchise record for rushing yards. When it comes to defending a quarterback like Jalen Hurts, where do you start? Uh, it's hard. You know, it's, uh, he's, he's having an outstanding year. Um, he's really got a unique skill set as a dual threat player. Um, you know, you saw it in that game. He's able to make yards. Uh, running the football, he's really good with the ball in his hand. He's elusive, he's fast, uh, and he's good throwing it too. You know, he's almost 70% uh, completion rate. He's got weapons to throw too, so uh, he's a dangerous player right now. Now Mike took the low-hanging fruit because everybody talks about Philadelphia's offense, but their defense has actually been ranked higher throughout the season. What makes them so good? Well, I think it all starts up front. You know, they've got a lot of guys on that line, um, you know, start with Fletcher Cox, who's been, you know, his entire career there. Him and Hargrave are playing really well in the interior of the defensive line. Uh, they just added Limbo Joseph and Sue uh, in there, two bigger guys that have played a lot of football. Williams, the draft pick from a couple years ago out of La Tech, um, he's a quick, active player who's really playing well. They rotate those guys on the edge. You know, they signed Reddick in the offseason, they signed Reddick as, off, uh, as a pass rusher. Uh, Sweat's having a good year. They traded for Robert Quinn. And they've got two great corners uh, in Slay and Bradbury on the outside uh, that firm up the coverage. Philadelphia is 10-1, and one, and they've gotten a ton of national publicity. So we've heard over and over again about all their stars. When you watch them on tape, though, what do you need to talk about about the Philadelphia Eagles that isn't discussed enough? Well, I think it's the multifaceted components that they're uh, using on offense and on defense. There's different personnel groupings. They're getting to the same type of plays, but doing it with different people on offense 
and defensively it's different packages with this player kind of playing the same position that the other guy played but they're changing it up a little bit. Uh, Howie Roseman's done a great job of assembling that team there and Coach Sirianni uh, in his second year uh, has got him really playing well. The Titans have won plenty of big road games like this one. What's going to be the key to leaving Philadelphia with a win on Sunday? Well, it's another tough road environment. We, you know, we saw it in Green Bay. Uh, those fans up there, the Eagles fans, they're really passionate about their ball team. And um, you know, we've got to go in there and, and play our style of football. We've got to be sound on offense and defense. Uh, got to get the run game going on offense, let the play pass build off that handle the front, uh, which we talked about. Uh, and defensively, it's about containing this rushing attack, whether it's Hurts, uh, Miles uh, Sanders at, at running back, Gainwell's playing well for him, uh, AJ at receiver, uh, Smitty at receiver. They've got a big veteran offensive line that likes to lean on you. We got to get off blocks uh, and make plays and come away handling that road environment. Uh, playing the way we want to play. That would be the right way to start December football is to get a win there. Absolutely, Mike. Well, thank you for kicking us off. Enjoyed it. John Robinson, Talking Ball with us, presented by Duncan. When we come back, well, we've got a lot that we're going to be doing. Amy will visit with Tier Tart later in the program. He's a Philadelphia native. But up next, Coach Dave McGinnis goes beneath the surface to show us some of the X plays from last week's game. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Last Sunday did not go exactly as the Tennessee Titans had hoped. Didn't go that way at all, really. But there were a few positives, like in the passing game, the Titans continue to make progress throwing the ball down the field as Ryan Tannehill completes his third game back from injury the passing game expands. Absolutely, and that results in some pretty big plays for the Titans offense, so we had to bring in Coach Mack to break all of it down. Here he is in this week's Beneath the Surface talking big plays. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at two NWI plays, one Derrick Henry, big run on the screen, and Traylon Burks, nice ending for a touchdown, and Traylon Burks on a combat catch. First play we're looking at, third nine from the 40-yard line, first quarter, Titans are in 11 personnel, three by one. Bengals are in a five-man front. They got two mugged up players from the defensive right side, ends up being a three-man rush. They start out in a two-high shell, then they have a high hole robber that drops down. Westbrook runs the seam in a dagger concept, three deep seam buster, plus 25 yards for NWI, first down Titans. Five-man protection versus this four-man rush. Center slides left, perfect pocket for Tannehill to throw from. Next play we're looking at, first and 10, the 26-yard line in the second quarter. Scores now 3-3. This is 13 personnel, three tights, one wide, one back, five-man defensive front. Chick goes in yo-yo motion. They're going to rush five, three under, three deep coverage. Off of the play action, kind of a half boot away, perfectly set up screen. Brewer and Davis get out front. Austin Hooper releases transcontinental to block the post safety. Missed tackle by DJ Reader coming from inside out. Henry is off to the goal line. Burks is running a clear out, goes to the ground, attempting to block the corner deep down the field, but great second effort, gets up, pursues the ball. It's punched out from behind by number 29, Cam Taylor Britt, but Burks alertly recovers in the end zone. Titans touchdown. Our third play, first and 10 on the 25. The score is now 10-10. Titans are in 11 personnel, which is three wides, one tight, one back. Bengals are going to give us a four-man rush with a two-high shell. they got a drop-down safety to make it four under three deep zone. NWI runs an excellent spacing route, finds the dead spot in the zone for a 20-yard completion and a Titans first down. At this four-man rush, the center works to the right this time. Excellent clean cylinder for Tannehill to throw from, resulting in a first down. Our final play is first and 10, 235 in the third quarter. This is 11 personnel. Now you can see the Titans are in condensed splits, which means they're closer to the tackle box. Number two, Robert Woods goes in fly motion across the center. Traylon Burks is the X receiver in a numbers minus three split. It's a play action. Tannehill moves the safety with his eyes, gets the safety to bite up, leaving Burks one-on-one -on -one with the corner, runs a perfect deep post, and defeats the corner on a textbook combat catch for 51 yards and a big Jeff celebration at the end. Big plays, also known as X plays, exactly what the Titans are going to need against the Eagles on Sunday. But on the other side, the Titans defense does not need to allow Philadelphia those big plays. 
When we come back, Amy Wells sits down with one of the guys who's going to try to stop him from moving the football and making big plays. Big Tier Tart talks about his journey from Philadelphia to Nashville in our Nissan Insider next. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Time now for our Nissan Insider. And this is a native Philadelphian, Pierre Tart. On the season, he has 13 solo tackles and has one of the most spectacular plays of the year, his interception in October at Indianapolis. Pierre Tart's route to the NFL, circuitous at best. As Amy Wells finds out, it took a lot of work and a lot of travel to get the big man to Music City. Tier Tart, I want to start at the very beginning, like all the way back at the beginning of your career, like when you were in high school, start at the beginning. How many kids are in your family? There's about 10 to 11 of them. 10 to 11? <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> That's a ton. What's it like growing up in a family with that many people running around all the time? I mean, everything is competition, so I mean, I just feel like it's all, everything's always competitive. Who can get to the food first? You know, who, uh, who's the best at video games? Who's the best at basketball? So for me, it was always just competitive and just trying to keep up with my older siblings. Because you're on the lower end of yeah, the Yeah, I'm group. the second, the youngest. Oh, so yeah, you've got a ton of people to compete with and really start to, I mean, you probably are good at a lot of things because of that, right? Yeah, I mean, I definitely played a couple different sports growing up. Played a little baseball, uh, definitely basketball. I actually did track and shot put and lacrosse in high school. You played lacrosse in high school? <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't strike me as a lacrosse dude. You're pretty big. I mean I wasn't going out there trying to score goals. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't your, your job? Nah, I was out there crunching people. <laughs> so you're playing basketball and you end up having an encounter that kind of changes the course of your life. How did you actually end up playing football? I mean, um, so I was out there playing basketball with my uh, uh, Walter D. Palmer and uh, the coach from West Philly saw me and asked me that I want to try out for the football team. And you know, it was just it was just something I wanted to try at the time. And you know what? And I actually went out there. I did the summer, and I actually wound up really liking the sport. So you get to Florida International. You play there for two seasons, and it seems like it's a really good fit for you. What was it about that school that everything kind of clicked for you? I mean, I, I think FIU um, definitely tested me in a lot of ways to see how bad I wanted it and see how bad I wanted to I wanted to take it, uh, make football a career. At what point in your life did you decide that football was your career? Like, this is something I'm going to do. <laughs> I mean, I think definitely, like, uh, when I first got here, I just thought, you know, because I'm out in college and, you know, going through high school, of course, everybody's goal is to make it to the NFL and want to be a part of the NFL. But um, you got to be realistic with yourself. Like, I was being realistic. I was like, it's like 1% of the world gets to play in the NFL, well, less than 1%. And I just thought to myself, I mean, I want to be realistic. So. I just hoped I had an opportunity to play in the NFL. And, you know, when I got here and, you know, after my first season, it was what it was. And my second season, I felt like I definitely took a step forward. Hey, tighten up, baby. Dub Nation! Ah! You ended up, especially here with the Tennessee Titans, you ended up with a team where you've got a head coach that says, I don't care how you got here. I don't care about your backstory. I just want to know what you can do on the field today. Is that something that's motivating to you, that it's about what you're doing right now? Yeah, for sure, because um, like I said, you know, coming from a smaller school, you don't get as many opportunities coming from bigger schools or and being undrafted, obviously. Uh, but once you get out there, that's, that's, well, that's who you are. That's what you do. That's how you contribute to the team. And I knew, and I, and I, you know, I felt like if I got the opportunity to show what I could do, I mean, I would have a, good, a fair chance to be here. Was there a better opportunity for you to show what you can do ever in your life than the moment right before the interception against the <laughs> Indianapolis Colts? <laughs> and nah, I think that was a really good opportunity because uh, a lot of people didn't know a big boy could move like that. So I got a little sticky for him, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was definitely cool. I know your teammates had thoughts as it pertained to your overall performance um, in that interception maybe some form issues, um, <laughs> maybe some technical constructive criticism. <laughs> what kind of response did you get from your teammates after that play? It was, I definitely got some jokes about doing D moves on my head. But other than that, it was, it was pretty cool, other than the high point. Since that moment, 
there's been a lot of football. There's still a lot of football left to go in the season as well. How do you build on something like that? I mean, you just keep working. You keep finding little things to improve on. You watch yourself on film. Um, you find out, like, you know, you just find little ways to improve through that, you know? So, I mean, that's how I feel like I can build on it. Honestly, just trying to find little ways to keep improving. What do you like about playing for this Tennessee Titans team? I mean, I, I like it all. I mean, I like everybody. Everybody on the staff, you know, everybody's such great people. It's such a great energy, great feel here. You know, um, I really enjoy the, the players too, you know. They really try to make it feel like a family environment for me. Good stuff from Amy Wells with Tier Tart there and the Nissan Insider. Amy's going to be back when we return with more Titans All Access to recap two historic Titans victories in Philadelphia. Can they make it three this weekend? We'll see. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It is time for the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week. And Mike, I think we need to talk kicking. Okay. Randy Bullock has been struggling with a bit of an injury. Yes. So the Titans made the decision to elevate Caleb Shudak from the physically unable to perform list, a rookie who had never kicked in Nissan Stadium and he played on a rather windy day. Was that a good decision? I think it was. I think Shudak did fine. You know, he actually was injured on June the 7th. So he had not practiced with the team in five months, mm -hmm. which means he had never kicked in a game at Nissan Stadium. And overall, he did well. He made three of his four field goals. He made an extra point. He had four touchbacks in five kickoffs. I thought for his first time, the Iowa graduate did a good job. I thought it was a good decision. Also, interesting note on Caleb Shudak. I went to our ace researcher, Dwight Spradlin, and I asked him, at 5'7", 177, is Caleb Shudak the smallest Tennessee Titan of the last 25 years? The thought is yes. We could come up with only two players who were 5'7". Kalfani Muhammad, a running back, and Dalen Dawkins are running back, but they were both heavier than 177 pounds. When you saw Shudak out there in the ball game, you're like, that dude is small, but he is mighty with the foot, and he kicked it well for the Titans. Good job by 25-year-old Caleb Shudak. Mike Keith, you have a tremendous amount of information in your brain. It's scary, isn't it? It's a little alarming. Especially about kickers. Yeah, it's a little alarming, but I think we could make it useful in this moment. Okay. Do you have any good memories of Titans-Eagles games of the past? Well, I have good memories about the results. In, in 2000, a kicker, who I liked very much, Al Del Greco, made a fifth field goal on the day. This one of 50 yards to lift the Titans to a win over the Eagles at the old vet, 15-13. to 13. It's the coldest I have ever been in a press box. Ooh. They knew they were getting rid of the stadium, so there was no heat. It was just <laughs> brutal. And then 2006, we go to Lincoln Financial Field for the first time. Titans and the Eagles. Titans are 2-7. and seven, And Tennessee wins in a major upset with Vince Young, Travis Henry, Keith Bullock, and several others making big plays in the game. It started a six-game win streak, which nearly got the Titans into the playoffs. So the Titans do have some decent mojo as they head into Philadelphia this weekend. They've won there before, they've won there as an underdog, and maybe, just maybe, they'll get a third win in Philly this weekend. A lot of information Sorry. in that brain, Mike yes. Keith. Don't apologize for being smart. Well, I don't know if that's smart, but kicker knowledge <laughs> and Titans knowledge, check, check. I think that's good. We got to take a break Let's do to it. just refresh your brain. But on the other side, we're going to have your Titans game ticket. You don't want to miss all the information about the Titans taking on the Eagles. Titans and the Eagles Sunday in Philadelphia. Time now for your Titans game ticket. All the information you need to know about Sunday's contest. Here once again, Amy Wells. Well, Mike, the Tennessee Titans are heading on the road to take on the 10-1 Philadelphia Eagles. And Philadelphia is coming off of a Sunday night win, 40-33 over the Green Bay Packers. Quarterback Jalen Hurts set a franchise rushing record with 157 yards. 
When he's not running the ball, he's got plenty of targets to choose from, including A.J. Brown, and Devontae Smith, and Miles Sanders, and many, many more. The Eagles are sound on the defensive side of the ball as well, with big plays from Darius Slay, Josh Sweat, Hassan Reddick, and so many more. Number four in the league in total offense, number two in the league in total defense, the Philadelphia Eagles. Number one in turnover ratio, too. Yeah, but not number one in our hearts. That's the Tennessee Titans. Nicely done. We're on the air on Titans Radio with the radio broadcast, which, of course, explains why I said Titans Radio. At 11 a.m. Central, Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan with Titans Countdown. Kickoff at 12.02 Central, the Titans and the Eagles from Lincoln Financial Field. Also remind you that next Wednesday, December 7th at noon, go to TennesseeTitans.com and watch us present the 2022 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Going to be exciting. 30 finalists, 10 winners, the best high school players in the state. Next Wednesday, coming up at noon central time, we'll be streaming it live at TennesseeTitans.com, the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award. That's a great day. Oh, it's my favorite time of year. All right. Hopefully it's coming up a win. Yes. Yes. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time. It's an honor for us to be Nashville's pizza representative in a Titans stadium. Pizza was something that we naturally just love, and we decided to take a stab at it. Hey, I need some freaking pizza. <laughs> when I first got drafted here, I was welcome with open arms. It's a vibe. You go in there and you've got hip hop blasting. Hey, it's Matt Moore. Be sure to check out Javon Curse at Slim and Huskies on Taste of Tennessee, exclusively on LG channels and LG OLED TVs.